labor demand, uh, there is pushing back, what they, the French call refoulement. There, are, there is ethnic and religious cleansing, border closures, attempts at controlling social networks, of course police br brutality, formal and informal camps, hardening the legislation on immigration, etc. You could call it a war. In these conditions you could call it a war. Uh, there, is, uh, there was a case of one uh, we had uh, during uh, not so long ago in July and August of this year we had uh, um, uh, especially in Italy uh, an extreme politics of not only closure of borders and, and pushing back migrants but uh, closure of ports there was one character, one political character called Salvini, uh, a fascist uh, from the fascist party called the League, La Lega in Italy, who was uh, vice uh, prime minister. Since, uh, since then uh, he has uh, fallen from power, but uh, he had managed to block all Italian uh, ports and of course other European countries didn't want to take those rescuing ships, rescuing and salvaging ships, uh, uh, and didn't want to take those immigrants, neither France. Spain took some. Uh, Portugal took what they could. Portugal is the only decent country in <laughs> Europe currently. Uh, and uh, uh, Malta closed the uh, Greece is overwhelmed, Greece cannot take anymore. Uh, so uh, these people who were rescued by the remaining uh, uh, rescue and uh, salvaging uh, ships, which are not state ships, right? they are private ships or associations, humanitarian associations, who uh, rescue uh, people in the Mediterranean since in 2016 uh, uh, Europe has stopped all uh, organized uh, uh, organized uh, uh, programs of there were several sub, uh, subsequent pro, uh, programs of uh, meeting the refugees at sea salvaging some of them, filtering them, and letting some of them through, very small numbers. Uh, that had been completely stopped, and those uh, um, European, uh, uh, European institutions that were doing that before uh, have been transformed into something called Frontex, and Frontex had only one Frontex has only one aim, uh, closing the borders, not allowing anyone over the borders. Uh, so actually, uh, from uh, helping and rescuing uh, migrants, we have turned at policing them and repelling them, uh, pushing them uh, back. And we have the, the case of two, uh, several, several ships, uh, not so many, but several, of these uh, alternative uh, uh, associations and, and humanitarian groups uh, in Europe, some of them uh, German, some of them French or uh, Italian, uh, some of them had uh, women captains. There were two or three with women captains. These uh, two, especially two of these women captains were um, had become very famous during that time because they resisted very well in, in helping these people. Uh, I will not repeat that story, but it is there in, in the paper. Uh, they, uh, I, also, uh, I also must uh, uh, remark uh, uh, on this topic that uh, the, the humanitarian organizations helping the migrants 
in uh, Europe, in different countries, are mainly female. They are mainly women. There are some men, but uh, the, the great number uh, are women. So I thought there was some uh, important uh, possibility here of uh, collaboration between women's organizations, uh, feminist organizations, and uh, uh, migrants, migrants organizations. Migrants uh, need to be seen as a as a specific movement, not uh, at all uh, similar to what we once used to call uh, social movements, because they keep turning on, it's always new and new people. Uh, but uh, there are uh, 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 activists who uh, keep the contacts and, and who keep somehow the unity of the uh, movement. There is nevertheless a movement, but we have to learn how to understand it and deal with it. Uh, in Italy, uh, during uh, the um, when this uh, fascist Salvini was in uh, power, we had uh, many rocambolesque uh, events, uh, which I uh, shall not repeat here, but which are very uh, telling about the atmosphere and about uh, how uh, these things. Uh, happen uh, and how uh, extremists have a lot of support in uh, well-thinking uh, nationalists and patriots. They have supporters. They have uh, much resonance around uh, with extreme right uh, formations and there is a lot of propaganda against uh, uh, foreigners, uh, uh, people from the global south, from southern countries, uh, people with uh, darker skins uh, against Muslims. There is a lot of Islamophobia. Uh, and uh, so all these things come uh, together. But uh, uh, somehow the migrants symbolize the current prevalent condition of humanity, I thought. Uh, humanity in movement. Uh, migrants are a movement also because they move. They are in movement. They really move. And uh, it is somehow, there is a new universality of exiles and of migration. And it is crucial that we should defend the right to movement and to hospitality for all. And uh, as uh, Joyce reminded, uh, reminded me uh, here previously, the right uh, to escape uh, uh, concept uh, of uh, <coughs> Sandro Mezzadra, as you know. Uh, one should have the right to escape. And one should have, even, even without escaping, one should have the right to live wherever they want, to go and, and settle down wherever they want. Uh, now, uh, these are somehow new nomads. There are some new nomads here. Uh, new nomads uh, who actually, when you look at them, don't uh, seem to uh, particularly aim, sometimes they do, but particularly they do not aim or at such and such a society or pick up such and such a place. Uh, they accept in advance the conditions they will be put into. They accept, they are open in advance. There is a fundamental, uh, fundamental uh, primary opening in the migrants. They are open. They go with open heart uh, ready to accept the difference, ready to accept the difference, ready to conform as much as they can. Once they come to Europe, we don't even 
we don't even uh, we can't even tell that they are foreigners. Once they have reached Europe, they wear European clothes, obviously because they lost everything on the way. So they have been given by some humanitarian organizations some other clothes. They dress in European clothes. They come in. We can't tell that they are foreigners. They are ready to integrate. They are ready to collaborate. They are ready to work. They only ask for one thing, to work and to be able to uh, contribute and to live out of their work. Uh, of course, uh, we, uh, people who reject migrants, uh, people who reject migrants uh, link them to terrorism. Most of the time this is nonsense. But there have been such uh, examples of uh, political statements of rejecting them because uh, terrorists would be among them. First, we produce terrorism. We export it from Europe. We produce it because of our uh, arrogant uh, and warmongering politics uh, in different places in the world, and then uh, it produces uh, terrorism, and then we proclaim that all immigrants who flee from that are uh, terrorists. But uh, there is a, I would say, an important and uh, interesting for me uh, intersection of uh, interests, of uh, political interests among the migrants and, uh, as I said, uh, women and feminist uh, organizations, but also uh, other uh, various movements. There is a coincidence of uh, various uh, uh, movements uh, of uh, engagement of resistance to wars, to violence, movements uh, against racism, against all forms of discrimination and so on. So there is, uh, there is a possibility, there must be a possibility for uh, for political sensibility in Europe to welcome these people and to work out with them. Uh, uh, what we need to work out with them is uh, something in common, something common. Uh, a common Europe. The Europe to come cannot be Europeans only. Not, cannot be of the Europeans by birth. Plus no one is European by birth. But, uh, uh, there is this illusion, uh, but uh, we need to construct a Europe, if it is going to be democratic, together. Of course, for the time being, Europe is a failure. Let's see uh, what we can do in the future. Uh, so we should uh, Construct it together, but then we need to welcome them. We need to welcome them, we need to open, to be open, as open as they are. Uh, which is not easy, because they are incredibly open. I have called those uh, people migrants, those migrants, not only the migrants, but uh, specifically in this case, I have called them. Uh, uh, the missing citizens, our missing citizens, they are our European missing citizens. And uh, I have the concept, the concept comes from Amartya Sen's uh, concept of missing women. Amartya Sen uh, studied the, <coughs> the social uh, <coughs> setting of India, and uh, in India you have about uh, 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 something like a hundred uh, 
100 million, is that possible? A huge number, I can't tell you the number, I'm sorry, I'm bad in numbers, of missing women. Because in India, like in China, uh, they uh, uh, bought female fe uh, fetuses and they, and they kill little girls. So uh, when they become adult, for generations, women are missing. He called them missing women and he counted them. When you count a, a, a population and when you name them, when you give a name, it becomes visible. You, you would never know if you don't give it, give them a name, they remain invisible. Nobody sees the missing women because they are not there. They were never born. Uh, but if you give them a name, missing women, it's a big chunk of the population and everyone would be happier if they were around because men have no one to marry. Uh, right? And whole generations of young men have, have no girls to marry. Uh, so I have called the, the, the migrants our missing citizens in Europe. Uh, if we name, name them as missing, missing to us, to us Europeans, uh, we can visualize them. This is what I thought. Uh, of course, we would need to go uh, into uh, many details of the neoliberal uh, version of uh, globalization and how uh, our uh, societies and our economies uh, work. Uh, maybe I should be able to do so more in details uh, in the classes with students. But uh, in any case, the price, the price at uh, keeping uh, neoliberal globalization as it is, is very high. It is a price in wars, it is a price in terrorism, it is a price in fascism and post-fascist politics. Um, Of course, uh, many of the words we use, uh, we use today uh, in uh, political uh, language, have uh, lost uh, their equity and uh, uh, we still have to recover what we once meant by those uh, words and uh, we need to uh, also uh, produce a kind of Epistemological, uh, uh, epistemological revolution, which will also be a, a revolution in the um, political uh, language in, in order to understand what we are talking about. Um, people are pushed back, people are rejected, people are expulsed from the European Union and from individual countries. And uh, some of the European population, I don't know the proportion, but some of the European population agrees with it. Maybe most of the European population. This is very worrying. Uh, but this is where uh, what we call exception will be politically theorized through uh, mechanisms of immunization so-called immunization, and uh, made a theoretical shield instrumentalized to salvage, in our case, Europe's self-esteem. Uh, immunization is a met medical metaphor, right? You get immunized against something, it protects you against an illness, but if you get too much of it, uh, you succumb, you are, uh, you are, it's like vaccination, right? Vaccination, most of the time, is very good immunization. Sometimes if you don't get too many of those uh, um, elements of, of uh, immunity, 
it is it is too much. So uh, we, uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, when we talk about immunization, also in in political and social terms, uh, we must understand that no proportion can be given in advance of and no recipes can be given in advance as to what can be done, how far, uh, in order not to make it worse. How far should we go in order not to make it worse and to make it better? Which means that every instant, every political act is political, is responsible. There is no way of doing things without uh, being attentive at uh, these uh, proportions about uh, immunization. Um, as I said, the disaster in the Mediterranean Sea is the result of the European response, or rather the European non-response, since 2016 to the arrival of a wave of would-be immigrants in 2015. 2015, if you remember, there was uh, the explosion of the war in Syria, so many people came out of Syria. So most of them were Syrians, but some others uh, uh, with them. And especially since the access of an uh, extreme uh, right hardliner in June of 2018 in Italy, the fellow I already mentioned. Uh, this hardening had happened from 2016 on, uh, in the first place through Italian subsequent decrees when uh, Italian ports were closed to uh, rescuing uh, ships. Um, he uh, actually, he had uh, pronounced decrees and then they were transformed into a law uh, just uh, two or three months be before Salvini fell from power, but uh, the damage was done. The damage was done. It was a law imposing the closure of Italian ports to all rescue ships and to all uh, humanitarian organizations. And uh, it was a criminalization of rescue NGOs and rescue associations, rescue activities and operations. We also have such criminalization of rescuers in France when they try to uh, cross, to, to have the migrants cross borders when they bring them over in cars uh, and uh, probably in other places in Europe too. Uh, and although this uh, uh, first outlawing of rescuing humans had been proclaimed by a single country, by Italy, it had had and even still has a disastrous domino effect on the whole region and on Europe because it is uh, somehow it was made uh, contagious. Now, since the departure of the Italian hardliner from uh, power, the situation has somewhat eased. Uh, but not all that much, because uh, rescue ships are now allowed to dock in Italian ports, uh, but European states still can't agree as to who will take how many of, of those. You know, it's, they would have a ship with 100 people or 200 people, and they can't distribute them all over Europe. And uh, they can't distribute them quickly. These people, these people are exhausted. They need to be uh, helped immediately. 
they can't, sometimes they wait for weeks, for months before they are assigned provisorily to a country because after that they will go to the procedure, the whole procedure within a country to know whether they can remain, whether they will get asylum or not. This is just the first assignment where will they land. Uh, European countries are not able to decide upon that. We have about uh, five uh, hundred uh, million uh, inhabitants. We can't take in 200 or 500 or 5,000 people uh, or, or a million people for that matter. Uh, the the Nobel economist uh, Thomas Piketty had said immediately Europe can take in uh, a million people a year, no problem, no problem. But uh, you need to prepare the ground, which means you, you need to make economic, social conditions, political conditions. You need to uh, build uh, facilities to receive them. Uh, uh, France, for example, purposely doesn't want to bring to, to build any facilities because they think that more will come if they build facilities. So we keep them very often in, in uh, uh, unorganized camps called jungles, like in Kale. I think most people have heard about it. Uh, it is uh, really <coughs> In human conditions, we have inhuman conditions there. Um, so uh, now rescue ships are allowed to dock in the ports, but the states still don't organize any rescuing and salvaging. Plus, uh, Europe uh, helps, for example, in Libya, uh, uh, helps uh, uh, local. Uh, Militias dissuading, uh, uh, dissuading a safe uh, passage to Europe, S but they don't dissuade mafias who uh, uh, earn a lot of money on those uh, uh, migrants, and uh, they uh, board the ships that are not uh, safe, which capsize immediately. And if there is a round uh, salvaging ship, they will be rescued and some will die. But uh, very often there is no ship around because the uh, uh, Mediterranean is great and uh, there are few of those salvaging ships and uh, uh, coast guards do not uh, rescue uh, migrants anymore. Coast guards do not do that. Uh, there have been some exceptional cases of late uh, where coast guards have brought in some uh, migrants. Uh, before, it was a duty, uh, rescuing migrants was a duty of the coast guards. Also, it was a duty of all ships passing by, commercial ships, merchant ships who pass by. If they see uh, migrants, they should uh, rescue them. Uh, if they see them capsizing, they should rescue them, they should bring them to port. Uh, they are discouraged, merchant ships are discouraged of doing so, and they apparently, they switch off their SOS uh, signals. Uh, when passing by, they don't see anything. Um, fishermen, uh, commercial ships don't rescue people drowning. Coast guards don't do that. There are just a few NGOs, a few organizations, a few uh, a few uh, ships, rescue ships, who do that, and they are not enough. So. Uh, <coughs> It is under such conditions that we must think about migrations and try to understand them within the historic conditions of our times. It is a big issue. 
the same time it is an issue ignored uh, by a big part of the population for which for whom it is no issue at all you see no issue uh, and this gap between big issue and no issue is enormous enormous in Europe uh, the gap between the haves and the not haves uh, the gap uh, between uh, 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 my comfort uh, and your life 